Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. An Augustana University hockey player accused of causing significant damage on the O'Gorman campus in Sioux Falls faces additional accusations this midday. The Minnehaha County State's Attorney's Office has filed six charges against 21-year-old Ethan Peralt, including DUI and having an open container in his car. He's also charged with reckless driving and intentional damage to property, totaling $5,000 to $100,000 in damage. Police say on Monday night he drove through a fence through through the grass and the artificial turf outside O'Gorman. According to the university's website, he's a freshman hockey player from Ohio. Augustana released a statement saying it's aware of the charges and does not condone this conduct. Peralt is scheduled to make his first court appearance this afternoon. In national developments, it was a terrifying night for thousands of people on the path of powerful twisters across the Midwest. Tornadoes were spotted in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio with extensive damage reported. Dave Malkoff is following the storms in hard-hit Barnsdall, Oklahoma. Crews are searching demolished buildings in Portage, Michigan to make sure no one is trapped in the rubble after two confirmed tornadoes inflicted extensive damage in the small town Tuesday night your house being there one second and then the next thing you know it's just you can't live there anymore. Isaiah Erickson lost all his possessions but the area had no reports of deaths or serious injuries. Across the Midwest twisters hit a number of communities overnight including Milroy Indiana and Salina Ohio. In Barnstall, Oklahoma an EF4 tornado took out neighborhoods up to 70 homes on Monday night. It's going to take a while to clean all this up because we are still surrounded by debris everywhere. Things like this wooden beam right here that were swirling around in the winds 170 miles an hour. It feels devastating to look at this when you've worked your whole life. Jimmy Blake rode out the storm in a shelter with her grandson and other family members. I prayed in the car three times. It, it was overwhelming. Despite the damage, she is grateful. To know that I'm safe, my husband's safe, my mother's safe, and my eight-year-old grandson's safe, and so are all of my animals. I'm very thankful for that. Forecasters say the storm threat moves mid-south today, where tornadoes, damaging wind, and flooding are all possible. Dave Malkoff, CBS News, Barnsdall, Oklahoma. Well, here in South Dakota, we're watching the skies for the chances of heavier weather in the eastern part of the state, Megan. That is right. We do have another chance for some strong to severe thunderstorms later on this afternoon and into this evening. We'll get there in just a second. Right now in Sioux Falls, we have some sunshine coming out, 66 degrees and an east breeze. Now as we head over to Rapid City, thicker cloud cover, keeping those temperatures on the cooler side right now at 46, but hardly any wind. Here's a look at our current temperature, 62 right now in Yankton, 63 in Brookings and in Sisseton, 57 in Mobridge, 49 in Buffalo, and a cooler 38 degrees in Custer. Our winds are mostly light right now at 5 to 15 miles an hour. There in eastern Kelloland, we do have that pocket of green, so some stronger wind gusts right now, but we'll keep our winds mostly light as we head overnight. We do have a few clouds there working their way through eastern Kelloland, but the thicker cloud cover in western South Dakota, keeping those temperatures on the cooler side. And if we take a look under those clouds, we have a few light rain showers working their way, mainly in western South Dakota, even some snow over the southern Black Hills. Now we'll watch the chance for more rain and thunderstorms as we head through this afternoon, mainly along and east of the James River. So for today, those popping up later this afternoon, again, keeping our winds mostly light, 67 Sioux Falls, 66 in Aberdeen, 62 in Pier, and 53 in Rapid City. The winds die down as we head overnight, but that chance of rain and thunderstorm activity will continue, 47 Sioux Falls, 45 in Aberdeen and in Pier, and 40 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, a few light rain or thunder showers lingering in the morning hours. Those will clear out, partly cloudy skies, 66 Sioux Falls, 68 in Aberdeen and Pier, and a breezy 61 in Rapid City. Then on Friday, we have stronger winds for everyone, partly cloudy skies, but those temperatures start climbing. 72 Sioux Falls in Aberdeen, 72 also in Pier, and 67 in Rapid City. We'll take a closer look at the timing of the rain and thunderstorm activity for tonight in just a little bit and what you can expect in your area.
All right, thank you, Megan. Severance Brewing Company will kick off Mother's Day weekend with a special pop-up market. The downtown Sioux Falls Brewery will welcome in five small businesses on Saturday with vendors selling everything from flowers to jewelry to on-the-spot photography sessions. Outside of doing this for mom, um, it's a nice way to help boost small business as well. Um, a lot of the folks here are, are small businesses in the Sioux Falls area that uh, this is, we don't charge anything for them to come in, um, just an opportunity for them to get some additional exposure and sell some more product. The pop-up market is happening from noon until 4 Saturday afternoon at Severance Brewing Company. We'll hear from more of the businesses taking part in the event tonight on Kelloland News. Augustana is set to compete in the Central Region Softball Tournament in Pittsburgh, Kansas. The Vikings earned their spot in the postseason with a dominant performance at last weekend's NSIC Tournament. This marks the 12th time in Greta Melstead's 18 seasons as head coach that Augie has advanced to the NCAA Tournament. She also won her 800th career game in late April. It is special, um, but that doesn't happen unless you have... Uh, obviously the players to do it and the athletic department that supports you and the school that supports you. So it's, it's really about the type of players that I've had in this program and we've just kind of continued it uh, from when, when Sandy Jersted built it many years ago. Augie is the number four seed in the central region and will open tournament play tomorrow against fifth seeded Oklahoma Baptist. In tonight's Island Kelland, we're going to tell you why Melstead hasn't changed her approach since day one and why she considers Augustana to be a perfect fit. 